Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included in the Ultimate Base 3.0. In the previous episode we finalized a couple of things and I noticed right now we are below 30 degrees so we are pumping out the precious water here. This in turn means we are now accumulating water and we need to find a solution to actually use it. In between the episodes I took myself the liberty of playing a little bit. As you can see we now have three glossy dracos in the joint. This also means I'm gonna add another mealwood plant. But we now accumulated 900 kilograms of plastic already. I still have lots of coolant lined up here and the steam vent is still gonna go for another 40 cycles. It is time to switch to electrolyzers for our oxygen setup. It was nice and easy with the algae but we only have 32 tons left and I rather would like to use it for my rocketry programs. We still have plenty of slime to actually process into algae but still now with our infinite water setup we can make the switch. I also removed a whole bunch of ladders where I feel like we don't need to have access to anymore for AI pathing reasons and I added a couple more incubators so we can get going with those glossy dracos. I also changed the settings for the steam vent hydro sensor to 900 kilograms from 500 because the more water we have in here the easier it is going to be to get this to temperature. And what I wanted to do is come up with an easy and very compact design. I want it to be very small dedicated to one electrolyzer that is self cooling and self powering. And then once we need to add more electrolyzers it's gonna be as easy as tiling it up. In the beginning I'm gonna add it right here but in the future I was thinking if we can make it as compact as this design here I might be able to just tile this up or down. This still gives us plenty of room for a power spine or a ladder shaft. So why don't we go ahead and think about the design and maybe I want to build it over here in order to get easy access. I need to think about the dimensions first. What do we need for an electrolyzer setup? We need an electrolyzer probably. Now this guy is gonna convert water into oxygen and hydrogen. We're gonna need one pump for the hydrogen and two pumps for the oxygen. The hydrogen is gonna flow into a hydrogen generator powering all of these machines. And then all we need is a smart battery and some automation to make sure everything goes right. Okay, no problem. Let's leave enough space for a liquid lock. I first need to get a feeling for this module. Then once we know the dimensions we can plan a little bit better. But essentially this is going to be the space for my electrolyzer. Maybe here. We're going to contain it in a little room with a gap. Or two gaps. One gap over here, one gap up there. And then we need three spaces. One is going to be for a sensor, another one for a pump and that is going to be the dimension of our room. We then need the space for a hydrogen generator, four tiles and two spaces for a battery and that would be everything. Wow, can we actually do this? It's only 11 by 8 tiles. What is this here? Nine tiles. So we are a little bit short but that's fine. We can visually fix this. So what I'm gonna do is build this over here so it looks visually a little bit nicer. If we did everything right that's gonna be the outline of our room. I made a temporary liquid lock. Before we can actually close this off we should make sure we can build everything. So we need to add a ladder there for instance. Let's maybe do the pumps first so we get the big stuff out of the way. Actually everything is big but one pump goes here for the hydrogen. I'm just gonna build everything out of copper. That should be good enough. We're gonna make sure to have enough cooling. Then I'm gonna add two more pumps like so. Also if we're lucky we can maybe encase this a little bit. So now that we have a better overview I might be able to explain what we're doing here. So there's a little trick that I learned a couple of months ago. Namely you can put an electrolyzer in liquid somewhat and then it's gonna be forced to expel hydrogen and oxygen very specifically. What we're gonna do is make sure it is more or less submerged in just a tiny amount of various liquids. Then it will have no choice other than spilling the hydrogen upstairs and the oxygen to the left side. The oxygen is gonna accumulate here. We're gonna take our time to actually cool it down. This is why I have this barrier. And then here on the top we have the two pumps to collect it. One electrolyzer spits out one kilogram of gas, 888 grams of that are oxygen, so two pumps are required, but one pump for the hydrogen is enough. We also want to make sure to automate everything, so Atmo sensor here, another one there, and another one here. And we want to connect all of these to their respective pumps. With these sensors we're going to make sure there's always enough gas before we actually start to pump out anything and we don't run the risk of making a vacuum where we don't want it. 
As for the battery, let's check that out. Also, copper. I just love copper in the beginning for some reason. And this is still a beginning contraption. No plastic or aqua tuners are gonna be involved in this. And then last but not least, we're gonna need a hydrogen generator. And this is the dedicated space for it. Also, let's wire everything up. All of this is gonna be powered by the same system. Uh, let me see, I might wanna go up here, do that. Also, I just noticed we kind of need to access the upstairs there. Let's try that, replace the battery later. Before I continue the blueprinting, I think I'm gonna let my duplicates build a bunch of the stuff so we don't lose overview. Another thing we need to take care of is some initial power. So I will have to power this up initially and I want to prevent any copper from staying in the contraption while doing this. Yeah, there's actually no real way we can do this. So I think I'm just gonna leave this piece of copper in case we ever need to power it from the outside. This can be our excuse. Okay, I feel like we can take care of the plumbing, maybe. It's gonna be fairly easy. We only wanna go out from here and then eventually I would like to enter the contraption at this point. What we then want to make sure is to have a nice cooling loop using radiant pipes and I'm gonna do it with iron. It's basically water against oxygen. Water is always gonna win. You don't need the best pipes for this. However, we wanna make sure we cover as much of the real estate before this gap here. So maybe we can do something like this and end up at the right spot. Yeah, that's okay. And we're also gonna use that to cool down the electrolyzer itself before it goes in and it's being converted into 70 degrees oxygen anyways. In that sense, we're using the 20 degrees water we're getting from here to cool down the 70 degrees oxygen we're getting from the electrolyzers. So maybe it's not technically self-cooling, you just get the same temperature of oxygen as you have water. And since we are already cooling down our water using ice in the storage bins and also the system there, we should be fine. Even if this system works, it's only gonna be a temporary thing. Once we take apart the starter base, I don't think I want to keep it in this place. Next up, let's take care of the piping here. One thing I already know is we want to bring the hydrogen directly into the hydrogen generator. And we can probably do that with normal gas pipes, granite. Let's go down here and go over there. Also the two pumps here ready to take care of the oxygen. They probably want to go up and then over to wherever we need them. Outside of the contraption, I'm gonna use insulated piping, but inside of it, it doesn't really matter. And then as of this point, this is gonna be our new oxygen setup. Wonderful. Let's bring this over here. We might have to give them a little bit of scaffolding here. Good, now I just need them to build everything upstairs and then we can set up the last automation. Namely, there's another condition I want to check in case we have too much oxygen or too much pressure inside of the chambers. The way we're gonna put this in liquid, the electrolyzer is always gonna think it is not overpressured, meaning it is gonna run all the time, even if we have a lot of pressure and we want to prevent this from happening. Imagine all the oxygen clogging up, for instance, and we cannot pump it out anymore. Then that is gonna be a good reason to stop the system. So maybe one thing we can already do is set up another Atmo sensor here. And then do I have access to the XOR gate? Yeah, that's one thing we need to unlock. Let's head down to automation. And I would like to see an XOR gate. Oh my gosh, it is not a beginner contraption. We need the material study terminal for it. The material study terminal takes rat bolts. So let me think, is there a way to do this without an XOR gate? I want to keep this like as a beginning thing and I cannot fail just because of an XOR gate. Okay, I thought about this briefly. I think we can do the same thing with an AND gate and a NOT gate. Do I have access to a NOT gate? Yes, I do. There's one thing I forgot, the bottle emptier here in order to get those initial liquids. Now we are gonna close this off here with a insulated tile. And then we're also gonna need an airflow tile right here in order to allow the electrolyzer to push the oxygen over there. This pump here is currently connected to a gas vent, just expelling all the liquids and this tiny water is protecting us. Now generally we can set the Atmos sensors here to go off above 500 grams. That is gonna ensure we have at least a little bit of oxygen in here and we don't pump out the entire room. There's actually one more thing we need to do and that is just get a tiny amount of hydrogen, which I will be getting from here. So I wanna make sure to already get this prepared as well. Ah, there we go. That's one thing I haven't thought about. We need to get hydrogen in here as well. How would I do that? With a vent? Not convenient. 
Wait, I have a better idea. What if we put oxygen in this room? That would be easy because we have the liquid lock here and then oxygen would also be in this airflow tile and therefore the hydrogen has no other choice than going here. You know, that is exactly what we're gonna do. We're not gonna hook up the hydrogen there. Instead, I'm gonna borrow a couple of pipes of oxygen right from here. That's gonna be easy. And then we just move over and we bring this all the way up to here. That's even outside of the build. Wonderful, I like that solution much better. With the chamber down here done, let's decide for our liquids. We don't have much choice. The first one needs to be heavier than the second one. So we're gonna get ourselves started with brine and we need to observe this because we want as little as possible. Like it, one kilogram is enough. And in order to get the brine, we probably want a pitcher pump somewhere. Also, I think I've found a nice use for our first plastic, which is a mini liquid or mini gas pump. Yeah, it's time to unlock a bunch of things. Look at that. All useful stuff, even some rocketry. I'm gonna enjoy the oil refinery and the polymer press later on. But right now what I want to go for is a mini gas pump in order to replace this guy. This way we will have a little bit more space for the Atmos suit and we can have the gas pump here. Uh, uh, Meep is coming with the brine. Okay, okay, let's just wait. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. okay, that's enough. It is 4,000 grams, so yeah, I overshot a little bit. The electrolyzer doesn't seem to be submerged, that's all we wanted to see. Now, before I add the water, I will have to wait for all the carbon dioxide to go. Nice, we actually achieved a vacuum. Let's switch this guy on again, water this time around. I just noticed we also unlocked the natural gas generator. That's of course also useful because we have a geyser just for that. Somebody actually brought the water and I totally missed it. I'm lucky they didn't bring a full bottle. Anyways, I want to make sure we collect all the goodies and then we are gonna close this off. Also, do we have all the connections? No, actually we don't have everything. There is a little bit of automation that is missing. Let's think about the scenario where we want to shut things down. We don't use the oxygen anymore, therefore pressure is accumulating. Let's say if we are above 5 kilograms or so, then we want to bring everything to a halt. But only if also the battery is at the correct level. I don't want to run the risk of the battery ever dying, but I also don't want to waste my hydrogen just willy-nilly. Now I need to check the smart battery. How do you work? Sends a green signal when battery is less than low threshold. And sends a red signal when battery is high. That means we are sending a red signal when the battery is okay. So maybe we don't even need a NOT gate, we just need an OR gate. Because either we have high pressure or our battery has a low state of charge. And that also means once we get a green signal here, we might want to invert it. So all we need to do is have this connection before I seal the room off and we can still play around with the other logic. By the way, in the test, I figured you cannot mirror this design. You have to have it on the left side. It cannot expel the oxygen on the right side. Now I know it looks like there is nothing here, but there is actually water in this tile. It's always a little bit weird with airflow tiles because liquids aren't allowed to touch the airflow tiles in quotes. We're gonna exploit that later down the line. But essentially we can now fill up this room with a tiny amount of oxygen to already occupy this tile with oxygen. And for that I'm gonna cut the line here and we can probably just connect this, yes. If everything goes well, we should only see it in this room, oxygen, and here it is still a vacuum. Good, I'm gonna get rid of these ladders so we can replace the battery and finish the circuits. Smart battery, you go right there. If everything goes right, we want to send a green signal if the battery needs to be charged and therefore we want to activate the system, including the generator. Or if we are above a certain pressure, because that means we don't have the space for all the oxygen we're producing, then we want to stop the system. Ah, no man, this is why I need an XOR gate. It would be so much easier with an XOR gate. Let's say as long as we are below 5000 grams, then we want to send a green signal and activate the system. If we go above those, then we want to deactivate it from this input. However, we only want to deactivate it if the battery is already low enough. It might work. Maybe it's even easier. It's just so much more logical to me with an XOR gate. I don't know why. Let's maybe initialize the system just a tiny little bit. I want to get a couple of drops in there 
and then we're gonna cut it off again. I just want to know how the electrolyzer behaves. It's now going through the cooling loop. Okay, joining the el electrolyzer. Disabled by automation grid. Okay, well, I guess I was looking forward to that a little bit too much. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, it should work. All the OR gate does is take either input and send a green signal. If we have one input green, then the machine is gonna run. The battery I want to set to 95% as fully charged and then we're gonna do 80% down. Right now it should be charged from our cable, but as soon as that happened, I think I wanna disconnect it. Hmm. Ooh, we might be able to get that out of there. Okay. At least I hope the debris always goes to the right. Okay, in this case, let's let... Ooh, wait, I forgot something. This should also deactivate or activate the generator. So that is an important cable. Actually, we can save a little bit on cabling. Yeah. Wait a second. I totally missed that this also requires the material study. I have another episode in mind with the material study, but it's clear to me slowly but surely we need to get into radiation. Anyways, now it's time to finish this and get it started. Okay, is it working? Yes, we have hydrogen in here and oxygen in there. And it is accumulating. Let's actually check this out. We are above the 500 grams already. And if we get even more, the secondary pump is going to activate. Also, always interesting to watch here is the temperatures. Because we should be seeing really nice and chilled down oxygen. Which I think is the case. And mind you, this has no overpressure. So we can accumulate as much as we want in here. However, I was an enormous dummy and totally forgot to take apart this thing. Oh my gosh, this was horrible. Also, now we might want to hook this up and disconnect you. Yeah, let's just do that. Oh man, this is gonna bite me so much in the butt. Fortunately enough, we have our cabling right there. But yeah, we need to build this quite immediately. Okay, now that we're not expelling the precious hydrogen into oblivion anymore, time to hook up this generator instead and we will be able to completely sustain the system just with that hydrogen. But with that out of the way, we should be able to permanently hook up the system and just let it run. We'll have to see if that is actually the case, but it looks like we can easily keep this up. The battery doesn't even lose charge. I mean, the hydrogen generator is also generating 800 watts per second. And there we go, we can see the secondary gas pump is only turning on occasionally, which makes sense because together they can pump one kilogram. And then hopefully our safety mechanism is gonna kick in as soon as it needs to. Actually, we can go ahead and check that. Yeah, right now we are already filling this up, which means we are accumulating more gases. And if we are above the five kilograms, the system should come to a halt, including a fully charged battery. We're already at 3 kilograms. This is going rather quickly, I have to say. It's a really good way to produce your oxygen. And look just how nicely this is cooling down. We will be getting nice, fresh, juicy and cool oxygen. Well, cool enough at least. And we didn't even require an aqua tuner. I haven't built a single aqua tuner in this. This is just unbelievable. I used so many aqua tuners in the past. This is already my favorite playthrough, even though we are not quite as far with the amount of episodes as we were previously. Okay, we are reaching the threshold here, almost 5,000 grams, and look at that, it came to a halt. And of course, as soon as the battery sends another green signal, because it gets too low, the system is gonna turn on again. And also, we have a little bit of backup hydrogen. Gosh, I love it. Okay, this is great. Seal it off and forget about it. I mean... This should work all on its own as long as we have the chill in the water. Okay, great. I'm actually pretty happy with that solution. Totally forgot about new duplicants. Not that I really want to take one. No, thank you. But yeah, guys, what do you think about this? It wasn't even that much of a hassle to build. And for once, it's something else. If we want more duplicants, we can just go ahead and build another one of these units. I mean, it's tiny. And we also don't use external power. It's insane. I'm just gonna show you the various overlays in case you're interested. Uh, let's for instance check the pipes here. Then we have the ventilation overlay. We have a power overlay and an automation overlay right there. And, uh, and that should be everything. Great. Okay, I would say with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap things up with our new oxygen generation in the joints. That also means we can get rid of these guys. Yes, we do not need any of that any longer. Also, my duplicants are enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you had a good time. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.